Um, hello everyone and many thanks for your interest, many thanks for your visit. In our previous video we analyzed one of the Apollo 15 images um, and we used a professional package, Photoshop, to enhance that image and show a couple of anomalies uh, on that image. Uh, Photoshop is a little bit expensive so if, if you can afford it there is an alternative uh, to Photoshop. Um, it's an open source graphical package called GIMP, which I'll show you where to download it from. And I would like to use GIMP in this video to show you the steps um, to enhance the very same image and to make those anomalies more clear. So first thing that we have to do is to download the software. So if you go to the website, GIMP.org, um, uh, just and then go to downloads so and download the latest version of it which is uh, by hitting this button you get the latest one as of today so download it install it second step is basically to grab the image download the image so if you do a search on google um, on this uh, image number as15-94-12823 that's the image image that we will be analyzing in gimp so go ahead uh, different areas where you can download it, different websites, so you can go to download it from here and we already discussed that by going through uh, this section Apollo, um, you can do it or a quicker way to do it is a shortcut is basically um, putting the name by here, so um, there you go actually just one A, so, and then hit enter and then hit on the image ID, you get the image um, to download it, click on the download image icon and what I suggest is download the raw file which is high resolution in a little bit big file size but it allows you to zoom in without having too much dis uh, distortion on the image when you zoom in uh, to, uh, you avoid pixelation. So go ahead do that um, and off we go so cool. Um, next step is go to open GIMP so uh, start find the, uh, the the area where the game is installed the executable so click on on the icon and a couple of seconds to open up um, important thing is sometimes when you open game the layers is not doesn't show and it's important to have the layers because those those are, this is the area where we will be um, manipulating the image so if it doesn't show go to windows um, Talkable dialogues and then select the layers uh, panel. Uh, so there you go. So uh, let me just, I don't need the brushes, so I can hide that one. And um, that's it. So cool. Um, so that's the first thing that we do. Um, now open the image. Um, uh, you have it on your desktop or whatever you have it, just locate it and open it up. And uh, here it is. Um, there you go. So that's um, image 9.4, Apollo 15, image 12A23. If I go back to Google uh, to get more information on this image, um, let me go back to Google and show you. So if you do a search on this and you click on the, I think this one, the NADA archives. You get a little bit more information on this image. Um, it does show you, uh, that's the image, obviously this is lower resolution, 9412823. And it, was, and it tells you that um, it was taken by Apollo 15, and it's a view between craters Minor and Eindhoven, so those two craters in here. It's described as, you know, a view between craters Minor and Eindhoven. Uh, it was taken during Revolution 37, or the Apollo 15 mission. Um, and it gives you some details on the uh, film and the camera use um, and the altitude as well. Okay, so that gives you a little bit more information on, the, on, on this particular image. There's not much information on the, on the internet about it. This image was actually, I mean, this is on the far side of the moon, the dark side of the moon, which we, which we don't see. Um, so uh, for some reason, there is not much, much information on, on the internet. Okay, cool. Um, let's go back to um, let's go back to GIMP. Um, we got the image, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to duplicate this image so we keep a copy, 
And a good way to do this, um, let me undock, let me see if I can dock, the, uh, just drag this. Um, uh, I just, uh, one second, uh, what I do is, um, I want to take this, okay, well, that's fine in here. So what we do is we duplicate this image by, I just want to move this up a little bit. So um, by dragging it, like we do in Photoshop as well, so we can drag it onto this icon in here and it will, it will create a copy of the image. So you just drag it into this little icon, create a duplicate of the layer, and add it to the image. So we preserve this uh, image, um, the, the background layer, uh, the original image, so we don't distort it. We can hide it, and we're working on the copy. So now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to look at those, the first anomaly that we detected on, on our previous video. And by just zooming in, and you can hit the magnifying glass or on the keyboard you can hit the Z key and you can see the cross, a little crossbar with a minus and plus button. So if I hit on the image, it will go minus, it will go, it will zoom out. But if I hold down control, the control key, hold it down, it changes to a plus. So you can start zooming in as I'm doing right now. Okay? And we let me go zoom back out. So we identified the first anomaly northeast of this crater, Maina, which is 87 kilometers wide. So northeast, and this, I mean, I can, I can see it, uh, a little bit difficult to see, but I can see it there. There's a, a bridge in there. You can, you can notice that goes like a, a camel hump. So it goes up, uh, down, and then up again and down. So the zoom key now is a minus if you hold control. Um, hold it down, it changes to a plus height, so you can click and click several times to zoom in. So without doing anything to this image right now, you can see this anomaly here. It looks a little bit uh, artificial. Uh, I mean, it looks like, and I'm not saying this, uh, this is an actual structure, this is the way I take it right now, but I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, you know, saying it is. I mean, you can judge by yourself. Um, what I'm saying is that without doing anything to this image, when you zoom in, you are still, straight away you notice something strange in this area. I mean, you've been to London, to Wembley Stadium, there is an arch structure like this. Obviously this one is miles, miles high above the, the lunar surface. Um, and without doing anything to the image, you can, you can distinguish this feature. Um, what we can do right now is that uh, we, we're trying to enhance this a little bit so that we can enhance the contrast and the, the exposure of the image to bring this up a little bit more. But straight away you can see that there is, a, there is an anomaly here because this goes up, down, it goes in and continues and then it tries to come up and then down. And it does the same in here, it goes this way. Now, this could be, you know, when this image was taken and um, the lunar orbit that was revolving around the moon on, on Revolution 37, uh, one of the astronauts, you know, went through the window, was absolutely surprised and decided to take pictures and use the Hasselbank to take one shot. And it, it might be the case that on the window there was a bit of dirt or a little plastic, which I doubt, because obviously inside the, the module it should be some, uh, the air should be clean, really. But it could, it could be the case. It could be just, just a piece of dirt, a piece of plastic or whatever, which go on the way, and then when the astronaut took the picture, you know, it just, it just got there. So it would be interesting to find another image in, uh, with a different angle or, uh, or the same crater or the same region to validate whether on that image this structure is in there. Then we rule out that this is, is there, because if it is in there as well, then that means that, you know, uh, on a different picture of the same crater, same region, then that means that something is uh, for sure 100% there. Um, so that's a way to, to validate that. So, yeah, so what we do now, we're going to um, just use the, the level um, to adjust the contrast and, um, and the, the exposure and the darkness of the, the image and to see whether we can clarify this a little bit more. So in GIMP, um, you go to um, hit on the colors um, and then click on levels. And this brings up this little window where you can drag and drop like in Photoshop, so to uh, do get a variation of the, of the colors and the contrast of the image. 
There you go. So straight away you see the changes. You preview the changes straight away. So if I make it darker, just by doing this, straight away, no manipulation. We just, there is no filtering here. We're just actually enhancing the image by highlighting the dark areas. And, and, and that gives like that 3D effect. So it exposes whatever it is in the image. It brings it to the surface. And you can, you can actually say now, but by just, by just uh, dragging these, these uh, pointers in here, you can straight away see more detail on the image, straight away. Uh, no, no, you know, any uh, change in colors or anything. You just, you just, you just change the contrast of the image, and this comes to light. So, if I do okay on that, on that, um, on that layer, and zoom back in, uh, remember, hit the Z key to activate the magnifier, hold control, so the, uh, you get a plus next to the crossbar and then hit twice or three times. There you go, so you can, you can see that, I mean, the arch, this structure, um, is it metallic? Uh, because it's got areas where the, you can see the reflection, I don't know whether it's a reflection or maybe it could be some kind of beams or light to alert the traffic, the, we are trafficking on the moon um, or whatever, like we do here on Earth, or it could be like the the the, the, the material that is used for this structure is more um, fluorescent or more kind of reflective on these areas. But you can see like like a bridge, like a bridge structure. It has uh, areas where it goes through. So because it could be beams you know, separated with some gaps. And then you can see uh, the background coming through on these dark areas, as you can see. Uh, if I zoom out a little bit. Uh, again, on Jim, you control, uh, but you release the control key and then hit again to zoom out. And this is what I was talking about. I mean, if you hold, in Gimp, if you hold the space bar, you can move the image to the right, or to the left. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to highlight the fact that if you if you see how this structure goes up all the way up and then goes down, and then it seems to go in and obviously is obscured by this area, but still you can see the kind of detail or shadow or whatever, or the same structure going in. Is this like a sort of highway or something, or some kind of uh, rake or artifact to transport you know, minerals or whatever that's been extracted on those craters? That could be the case, because remember, those craters are full of Ti2, Ti2, TiO2, titanium dioxide, which in effect is rich in um, helium-3, and, and we already discussed in previous videos the, the, the use of helium-3 for fission and for propulsion, you know, um, you know in space. And, and basically, it might be that this is a structure that is, is, is you know, is used for, for the transportation of that titanium dioxide, helium-3, which is liquefied, and, and, um, and then, and then somewhere in here is actually sent for distribution or whatever. But you can see that it goes in, it goes this way, it goes down. It doesn't come out here, it only comes this way on the highest point. And if I go to the left, uh, you, get, you get the same situation here whereby it goes in, it gets obscured by this area, which I think is vegetation. And then it might, it might, it might come up here, it might be like a headquarters in here, some you know, structure of buildings uh, set up in here for distribution. I mean, this is just me speculating, so uh, just to try to find a reason for, for this being here. So, yeah, uh, this is just doing, um, you know, uh, levels on the, on the image. We, we managed to get that, that information in there. Cool, so if I just um, get another layer, duplicate another layer, and, um, and then again, in GIMP, just drag it and drop it in here to get another duplication. I can hide this one. I'm happy with what I've done in here. So you can hide it by clicking in here, the little eye. And I'm working on this layer right now. So on this layer, what I like to do is use the burn tool, which is um, one of those, so to burn the image. So you can do Shift D uh, to clarify, to use to lighten it, or Shift D to darken it. So you click in there, and basically this will darken the, uh, actually clarify the image. But what I want to do is darken it a little bit. So I hold, um, uh, I think it was cheap D, wasn't it? So even control, just hold down control. It depends on the on the on, the, on, the, on working on Windows. So hit control and then start. I mean, it's working. Yeah, it is working. So basically, I'm burning the image. And the reason for burning the image, the functionality is basically to bring um, those dark details out 
um, to bring that kind of 3D uh, dimension to the image and to bring that out uh, to the surface. So this is what I'm doing right now. As you can see the dark areas of the image or the bridge are coming through the structure, which is probably some kind of metallic structure that has gaps. And you can see here what I was talking about. This material in here is different. It could be some beacon or something to alert traffic, aerial traffic. And you can see how it comes through straight away. And this is just no doing any artificial filtering on this image. We're just burning the image to grab those, uh, you know, whatever it is behind the image. That's all we're doing. And in GIMP, it's so easy to do. As I said, create the layer, use the burn tool, um, hold down control key. If you release control key, you lighten up the image. If you hold control and start holding the mouse and dragging, then you burn the image and you bring those details to the surface. There you go. That's the bridge. Amazing. And then if I continue doing that, maybe what I do is I lighten in here to see what I can expose that area and then darkening here, that continuation. I can do the same if I'm to move the image, just hold down the space bar and drag it along. Uh, and then you can start working on this side of the image again using the burn tool. So we use the levels uh, already, and now we're using, if I bring the levels up, those are the levels. That, and you just play with what you did before, you did the levels in here, but you can see when you burn, you get a little more additional detail, another layer of detail on this image. And, and just by using the burn tool, you can, you can grab that information in here, as you can see. There you go. So this is what we need to explore. And, and, and there are other tools in here that we can go through later on in future videos to further enhance this and bring more detail into it because GIMP is very powerful. It's like Photoshop, but this is open source and free and it has so, so much functionality in terms of you know, um, filters and, and uh, you know, exposure and changing the stuff on it so you, that we can do later. Obviously, it will be a long video, but I'm going step by step showing, showing you the techniques to get these this, uh, to come out, as, as you can see. Right, cool. So this is the first um, anomaly. Uh, I think this suffices for this anomaly because we can clearly see uh, the structure and the, um, the way it is constructed as well. The curvature, the kind of material they use, the reflectivity uh, at certain points, one, two, three, and four, and also the gaps that you have that allows the background uh, information, which is in, in, on, the, on, the on the surface, to shine through the image, the dark spots as well. So um, that's, that's enough. So um, I just zoom out. So control, but you hit the Z, the Z key, or click on the ma magnifying little icon, and zoom back out. Now, we identified the second anomaly it was to the right, so let's see if we can locate it straight away. So hold down the space bar, drag the image to the right. Uh, I mean, you can also use the, the roller on the mouse, but I think I prefer to use the, the bar. And that's, this is the second anomaly. I can see it straight away in here, as you can see. It's right there, in this area. This is a craft that is um, basically flying by, and obviously it's vertically right now, but it's called a typical saucer shape. Um, with um, a little bit of indentation and structure, uh, you know, uh, advanced structure, I would say. And um, again, on, in GIMP, um, you know, use the magnifier, hold down control, and zoom in. And there you go. There you go. I mean, it's no, you know, if you, later on we can rotate this area to, to see uh, the, this shape of it. Uh, you can see in the middle, uh, that's probably the engine, the propulsion engine. And you can see um, some kind of, I guess, uh, it's, got, it's got some kind of uh, tools or protrusions to probably, you know, dig out or, you know, some kind of uh, machinery to, to, to extend and, and grab something from the surface. But, uh, yeah, it, it's got uh, an unconventional shape. It's not as smooth as uh, the normal Sosa, you know, craft, but uh, it's got some rough edges to it. Uh, again, you can enhance this uh, by adjusting, by using the burn tool. So click on the, um, on the burn again, um, you know, uh, hold down the control key and then, yeah, paint on it. And you can see straight away uh, the edges and the definition of this image is amazing. There you go. I mean, make no mistake. This is, um, 
this is this is there and is there for a reason. So make no mistake. This is uh, this is uh, this is uh, something which is uh, on this on the on the space in a space in uh, close to the moon, really really close to the moon, and um, you can see it. So well, you know, if you throw some other uh, you know uh, change exposure or some more contrast, you will see more. You see this more in detail, like with any Photoshop. So we can, we can throw a filter to this, and um, you know, by using the, again the colors, and we can do like uh, adjust exposure on it, on this section, and then, you know, in GIMP, okay, it's not same. It's similar to Photoshop. You know, it's a little bit more clunky here, but all you have to do is uh, start playing with a, with an embassy in here for the black level, so you can define the image. And then you can adjust the exposure only for this area. You can see I'm, I'm, I'm playing with it. So this is what you can do, and you can make your own research and you discover it yourself. Uh, you can get a cut of this, and you can ro or you can rotate this bit. So I mean, you could get a layer, um, you know, to rotate a little bit, and um, you know, arbitrary rotation, and then you can, I guess, you can move it like this, and that gives you an indication of. I mean, this is will be the normal kind of uh, direction of the flight. For these uh, and conventional UFO, with, which got rough edges. I think, guys, this suffices for today. We explore GIMP. Uh, we can see how powerful it is. I can tell you, you don't have to spend money on Photoshop, uh, which is about twenty pounds or twenty-five dollars per month on a, on a cloud subscription. Uh, this software will do exactly the same, similar, and I show you how to achieve more on this software. And it's completely free. Again, um, all you need to do is, um, if I remind you, so go to um, go to gim.org, yeah, download, and then basically hit the button and install it, and off you go. So, um, no excuses. You can do your own research. When we discuss an image, we just find the image on a public domain website, download it, try to get a high resolution on the image to get more details. Because as you can see in Gim. Um, or in any pa uh, graphical software, uh, the more you zoom in, you you know the more pixelation you you're gonna have. And if the image is not of high quality, if it's a JPEG or PNG, it's not it's not the same when you zoom in. You you get into pixelation, and then the details are not clear. Whereas with a TIFF file, like the one you just downloaded, bigger file size, when you zoom in, you preserve that that the pixels you know, get 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 more quality on it, as you just saw on GIMP. In GIMP. So, um, I think that's that's um, I think that's enough for today. Um, uh, there, there was another. Let me just zoom back out. So, magnifying glass, um, zoom back out. Um, there was a fellow Alomani, which I won't discuss on this video, and it was to do with a lot of vegetation which I encounter on all these craters. I mean, this section of the crater, the crater walls. Um, is, there is a combination of gravel and rocks, uh, material that got uh, ejected when, when the impact happened. But also, uh, on this area, this, remember, this is the far side of the moon, that we, which you don't see. And um, on this area, uh, the temperature is different. Um, uh, it's preserved. It's, this is called cold area with cold spots. And basically, this is not, to me, this is not just uh, gravel or rocks or debris. But it's a lot of vegetation, and, and we will study that later. Or maybe you can do your room research and share it with me. Uh, there's a lot of vegetation in here in these craters, in these areas where there is, uh, the sun is not impacted directly. Uh, uh, um, similarly, on, on the other craters uh, adjacent to it, the minor one. I mean, even, even with, the, with, the, um, with the changes that we made, uh, you can straight away see it. I mean, it's, look at that. Guys, look at that, and start zooming into and, and, and apply some filters, and we can go to that later on in future videos to see that it's more more to see and more that meets the eye, you know, in these areas and in these regions. This is the far side of the moon, and, and, and obviously we don't have much information on this, you know. If you find another image of this resolution on the on the internet, let me know because I'll be interested to validate these anomalies uh, with. Uh, on different images and try to locate those anomalies on those images. Obviously, you know, the, the structure, the bridge will be there on different, on another different image, but obviously the UFO won't be there because it was flying by at that moment in time when the picture was taken. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye.